and we are going to be doing this nice sunflower picture. Great bright yellows. You can see that I have misketed out my fence lines so that I can keep them nice and clean um, for when I paint up against or up paint something dark behind them. So they are misketed out. We're gonna start with the center of the flower and I'm gonna mix some nice cadmium yellow with some yellow ochre and a little touch of red just to get myself a nice orangey yellow, but not an orange color. I don't want an orange color. I want it to be a nice intense yellow color. And I'm going to paint that whole center with that. I'm going to keep that nice and wet because I want to um, add some colors. So it has to be nice and wet for that. So when you are putting your watercolor on, make sure that you are keeping it nice and wet. You can see how wet my paint is. You want it to be that way so that when we add in additional coloring, you will be able to um, have that color blend nice and easy for you. You'll have nice soft blending if your paint is wet. It is better to be too wet than to be dry because you don't want that paint to be drying on you. So while I have my paint nice and wet, I'm going to add in a little bit of my CAD red around the edge and let that just go ahead and soak in and have a nice soft blend to it. And then I am going to allow that to dry. I'm not salting this, even though you would think that this is what you want to salt. I'm not salting this. I'm going to salt the light wash I put on after this. So this wash, I am not salting. I'm leaving that alone. While I'm leaving that to dry, I'm going to go up and I'm going to put in my nice cerulean blue sky in that section where you see it. There's a lot of dark around that, which are trees and leaves. So if you put your cerulean blue in and it goes a little bit farther than you want it to, as long as you have a nice soft edge, you'll be okay. But if you would get a hard edge to it, that you may see through. So you wanna try to keep your edges nice and soft. And by that, I mean that when you end your color with your blue, wherever you may end it, you just soften it with a little bit of water. So I will end that and I will just put a little bit of plain water up against the edge of that. That will soften the color for me and I won't have a, a real hard edge to worry about. Now I'm going back over here and I'm gonna be painting this in. That misket is gonna keep those fence lines nice and clean for me. So I don't have to worry about that. It would be really tough if I had to paint around all of those fence lines to keep them clean. So in that case, misket really does do what it's supposed to do. So this is the area where I'm going to have my blue sky. And I'll go ahead and soften that edge with a little bit of water, just so I don't get a real hard line there. And I'm going to allow the rest of it to go ahead and dry. My center is drying. Now my sky is going to be drying. 
And I'm going to move down to the bottom of my picture now, because if you look at the picture that we're working from, around my leaves and around my stem, I have um, some visible dirt. So that visible dirt, I am going to paint in with my burnt umber, which is my brown, my darker brown. I'm going to water that down really well. I'm going to add a little bit of black to it. But I'm going to put a lot of water to it also. And I'm going to paint the area that would be my dirt that I see under my leaves or around my, where my leaves would be. This is a nice light umber because it's watered down with water. And I am going to be throwing some salt on this because I would like for my dirt to look very textured. So I'm going to, after I paint it in, I'm going to throw some salt on it. I want it to look nice and textured. Salt works the best when your paint has become uh, a matte finish which that means it is still wet, but it has lost its shine. It's still wet, but it has lost its shine. So before this starts to dry on me over here, I'm gonna throw a little bit of salt down. I'll continue to paint this section over here. And you can see that I'm painting around my leaves. I'm painting right over my misket. So whatever you have on your palette, or I'm sorry, whatever you have um, down as misket, you can paint over that. That's the purpose of your misket, so that you can easily paint over it. You don't have to paint around everything. And until I decide if I want more greenery up there or if I want more dirt, I'm just gonna soften that edge right now with just a little bit of water until I decide exactly what I want there. But I'll go ahead and salt that. And because I don't want that salted color or that umber color to be all exactly the same, I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of black, water it down well, and I'm just gonna drop it into the salt areas. You can see how that salt will take that black paint and kind of dissipate it throughout the painting but it'll look like the color of the dirt has different shades to it also. Because I don't know, I mean, I don't spend that much time looking at dirt, but I do know that, you know, because of the rocks and so on in the dirt, your dirt is more than just one tone of brown. So I'm adding while the paint is wet and while the salt is still working, I'm just dropping in a little bit of black here and there to change up the color of the dirt. The rest of this is leaves, stems, and then of course our petals. I'm gonna go up now and do one more thing before I dry it really well with the hair dryer. but I'm gonna go up here now and add in my really dark tree that is in the background. That is going to be a mixture of sap green and black. If you don't really like using black, you can use sap green and indigo. 
and still add a little bit of black, but your indigo will go ahead and change it up a little bit and make it a really nice dark green color. You wanna have this a really dark green because that is what's gonna to help to make your yellow petals really stand out. So I'm gonna paint in this whole section and it's going to look like a pine tree, but I'm gonna go ahead and straight paint in almost up to where I want the edge of the tree to be. So I'm going to just paint in straight paint up to the edge of where I'm going to do some branches of my tree. Nice and wet. Use a smaller brush to get in nice and close around my petals. And then I'm going to dry brush the edge to my tree. So I'm laying my brush on its side and dragging that paint outward. That's called dry brushing. And that's going to give my tree a lot of rough edged branches. And then I'm going to go back in and I'm going to add some plain black into my tree to kind of separate out where my branches would be and to give the inside of my tree where my trunk would be some great depth. This is also really going to be exceptional for when I get my nice yellow petals on there. Okay. Now, I wanna let this all sit for a moment. I want it to settle in, settle into my paper because watercolor paper is rag. It is uh, uh, thick, raggy material. So you have to allow your paint to soak into that because that's what holds the paint and the color in place. So anytime you are putting your paint on, you wanna make sure that you, you know, give it enough paint first of all, and then allow that paint to really sink in well, because that is what is going to keep everything nice and um, bright and vibrant. Now in the picture, I have um, some green leaves on the right, but there's also um, some uh, siding to a house that's over there. I'm gonna forget that house. I don't care if that house is in my picture or not. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paint in under my um, green leaf there. I'm gonna go ahead. I don't wanna take any more dirt up into there, but I'm gonna add some just plain old green. I'm gonna put a little bit of cerulean blue to that green to make it a different lighter green. And I'm gonna fill in this area below that leaf with this nice color. That way, when I do paint in my leaf, it's not gonna be the same as this background color but it will blend nicely with the color of my dirt. It's also dark enough 
that it can um, help to keep my nice yellow petals bright and vibrant and stand out. So this is sap green mixed with some cerulean blue. And I am just painting in around my leaf and around my petals with that. I'll give anybody painting at home a minute or two to catch up. And I am going to go and dry all of this with my hair dryer so that I make sure that I have a nice dry area before I start painting my petals. I don't want any of this paint to be wet when I start my petals because I don't want any of that wet color to start to bleed in to my yellows. So I wanna keep it nice and light. I am going to dry it with my hair dryer while anybody painting at home can catch up. Okay. Be back in a flash. Okay, so I've dried it really well. I'm going to take off all of the loose salt that's there. And now I'm going to go in and start to redefine my center first, and then I'll start working on the petals. So to redefine my center, if you look at that picture, you're going to see that you can see a lot of the little seeds along the edge of this center. So how do you do that? We're certainly not gonna draw each little seed in, that would take us forever. However, you do wanna make that obvious that there are seeds and so on there. So I'm going to mix a little bit of my black with some of my burnt umber. And I am actually going to go in I don't want to lose my pretty yellow, my pretty yellow orange, but I'm actually going to go in and do some little circles along the edge. I'm still seeing my yellow, but I am also making areas that look like little seeds. And we're going to do this all along the end, the edge, I'm sorry all along the edge. We're gonna do a little bit and then before it dries, 
I'm going to take another brush and I'm going to use plain water and I am just going to wet the edge of that plain water and I'm going to add a little bit of black while it's wet to that edge to let it kind of come in towards the center. Then I'm going to go back again, continue on doing those little circles that kind of will look like seed pods. Nice and wet. You want to remain nice and wet so that when you go along the edge then with your brush, you're going to be able to have that um, pick up that wet paint and dissipate into the center because we're going to throw some salt in there too. So I'm using my water first along that edge. Then I'll go in with a little bit of black along that edge because that's what's going to come towards the center. And I'm also keeping an eye on it because I don't want it to dry because I want to get my salt on there before it dries. So if it looks like it's starting to dry, then I'm going to get my salt and I'm going to start to put it on. Continuing on all along that edge, leaving those little holes. And then getting my brush, I want to keep a nice soft edge. I don't want it to look like it's outlined in black. So you want to keep that nice soft edge with your water. Because we don't want to lose that nice coloring in the middle. Using my water, getting that nice soft edge, and I'm going to throw on my salt. And I'm going to let that salt work. That way I still have all of those nice little light sections all around the edge to my sunflower, but I also have my um, dark coloring that looks as if some of the seeds have been taken out. And once your salt starts to work, then you'll see some additional texturing. Now, if your center starts to lose color, it's okay to go ahead and put some other color in now while it's wet. Some of your yellow, maybe a little bit of your orange, it's okay to put that in there now because you're still nice and wet. It's not going to hurt anything. If anything, it'll help to bring back some of the brightness to your center. But you would just go ahead and add that now while it's wet. I'll just go ahead and put that nice yellow color back in. And it's all just going to dry. While it's drying, we can start to work on our petals. When you work on something like this that has a lot of detail, a lot of petals close together, you want to work on them individually. That's why mine are all drawn individually. So I know where I am going to be painting because I don't want to paint a wet petal up against another wet petal 
up against another wet petal because what will happen then is that'll all just blend and bleed together. That is not what we want. We want it to look as if each individual petal has some character to it. So by painting a petal and allowing it to dry, you are going to create a hard line between your petals because a petal that's painted and wet, when you allow it to dry, and paint another petal up against it, then that wet edge against the hard edge is like a double edge of paint. And that's what will help to outline your petals for you. So you wanna do a petal, you wanna let it dry, but you don't wanna just sit here and wait for it to dry. So I'm just gonna move away from that petal and go to one that isn't right next to it and paint that one. So you can hop and jump all over your flower so that you're not painting wet against wet and you're giving them all a chance to dry. You can turn your paper upside down, you can paint from the side, but all you wanna do is remember that you don't wanna paint wet against wet. Now, you can also change up the coloring in your sunflower, depending on what kind of sunflower you want this to be. Some petals are totally yellow. Other petals have a little bit of orangey color to them where they are attached to the center. So you could do that if you wanted to. So while your paint is wet, you could go ahead and put a little bit of that orange color right up close to where you uh, where it's attached and allow that color to just blend down into your wet paint. You don't have to put a lot in and it will go ahead and blend and bleed by itself. You don't even have to help it along the way. As long as your paint is wet, it will do it for you. If it starts to dry on you, then what you wanna do is let it totally dry and then go back in and re-wet your petal with plain water and drop your orange in. Otherwise, you're going to get um, hard lines. You don't want a hard line. You want that to have a nice blend to it. So I'm continuing on. This is just painting in your petals. This has nothing to do with all of the shadowing that's going to be done on your petals. That will all come later. You just want to get all of your petals painted in now. And by doing it this way, you are going to get a hard edge because you're going to be painting wet and then eventually you're gonna be painting another petal right next to it, but this one will already be dry. So when you go ahead and start to paint that next one, you're gonna get a hard line because you're painting wet against dry. And I'm gonna go ahead and dry some of these in a moment so I can show you exactly what I'm talking about, how you're gonna be able to see a hard line that's going to help to show the difference in all of these petals. Even though some of your shadowing is going to show the difference, by doing it this way, you're going to be able to see the difference also. So I'm going to put a little bit of my orange in there, allow it to blend and bleed around. Now, if you don't want orange in your petals, that's perfectly fine too. You can just leave them be yellow. You may wanna put in a darker yellow or a more intense yellow in the base. You can do that also.
Okay, so I'm going to dry some of these real quick so that I can show you what the hard edge would look like. And then we'll take a couple minutes and we'll just keep painting some of our petals before we move on to a leaf, okay? Okay, so now we're going to, I'm going to show you what that hard edge is going to look like since I've been talking about it. Now these petals are all dry. So because they are all dry, when I paint another petal up against that dry paint, when I paint that over here, Along this edge, I am actually getting a double layer of paint. So that double layer of paint is going to help to define my petals. Even though it doesn't look very evident, it doesn't make it stand out, it doesn't make it look like it's been outlined with a magic marker, but that double layer of paint right here is what is going to define your petals. So every time that you put your paint on and it is up against a dry petal, you're going to get that double edge of paint. Even if it's a lighter color, you will get that double edge of paint and that double edge of paint is going to help to define all of your individual petals. Now, don't get me wrong, the shadowing that we put on later, that is also going to help with your defining your petals. But this will help in a more subtle way. So I'm adding in a little bit of my orangey color. And I'm just gonna continue on painting all of my petals individually. That's why it's so important when you're doing detailed paintings like this, that you draw it detailed. Now there are many watercolors that you could do that don't require this much drawing, but something like this, where you're going to be painting in individual petals, then it is important. But if you were doing a sunrise or a sunset, it wouldn't be necessary to draw anything in because all of those lines are gonna be subtle for you. The only thing you would probably need would be your horizon line. But something like this, the more that you draw, the better for you.
So you can take a couple minutes now at home if you're painting along and continue to paint in your petals. I'm going to continue to paint in my petals for a couple minutes. And then we're going to move on and start on some of the leaves because we would like to at least get you um, pretty well finished with this painting before the end of this Zoom class. Some of the little details you might still have to put in, but it will all be uh, on your Zoom recording. So you can go back and look at it if you need to, whatever you need to do to finish up your picture. These classes are in conjunction with the Monroeville Arts Council and of course the Monroeville Library. They came as a series. Um, we started the series in the spring and then took some time off in the, a month or two in the summer, came back in the fall. We'll probably be doing this again in the spring. So if you're interested, you can come both to the library and watch the Zoom picture be done or you can simply watch from home. But all of these, um, all of these are recorded. All of the classes are recorded. So you can go back and watch them as many times as you would like. Everything um, is free. There's no charge for these videos. You can go back and watch the videos as many times as you want. You can pause them if you're painting along until you get caught up doing something and then continue on with the actual video. Or you can simply watch it a few times if that's what interests you. The Monroeville Arts Council and the Monroeville Library both have many, many, many different kinds of events. This is just one of the events with the library, but the Arts Council, they have quite a few different events also. So you can look online for their calendars so that you can see exactly what is being offered. The more you paint on this sunflower, the more it comes alive. Not all of your petals grow on your flower like a sunshine, a sunburst. They grow in all directions. So you wanna make sure to do that to make your flower look more realistic. Some are folded over, some are underneath. You have more than one layer to your sunflower. So you wanna make sure that you get in as many as 
um, possible. You don't want to just have one or two. You want to have a nice big grouping of petals. You also want to make sure that when you are working with these colors that you make your colors nice and vibrant. Don't water them down too much because watercolor color is going to dry lighter than when you put it on wet. So when you put it on wet, if it looks a little bit too light, then it is going to dry even lighter. So you want to make sure that your colors are nice and vibrant. I'm always making sure that my color is nice and dry so that I'm not doing wet against wet. I'll do another fast little dry with my hair dryer over there so I can continue on. And I will be right back. Okay, while I continue to do my petals, I'm gonna go back in here to my center. And I'm going to put on a very pale wash of black, really pale, almost to look like dirty water. Because I'm going to salt that, and that is going to give me that little bit of uh, texturing that I want. 
while it's wet, right in the center, I'm going to do my little black dot. You know that little black dot that's always in the center of your sunflower? I'm putting that in now while it's nice and wet, and I am going to throw my salt on that. So that salting is going to give me just that little bit of texturing that I want in my center. Make sure I have that nice black dot in there. And now I'm gonna continue and get the rest of my petals painted so we can move on to the leaves. Shouldn't take too much longer to get the rest of those petals done. Hopefully those of you that are painting at home, you'll get them done too pretty quickly. You wanna make sure though, it's so important that you have enough petals. If you don't have enough, you wanna make sure that you sketch a couple more in because a sunflower has rows of petals. You don't wanna get skimpy with your petals. These nice, big, bright flowers have a lot to offer with the amount of petals that they have. That's why they're so popular with everyone. They make beautiful bouquets because they're so full of that beautiful yellow color. You can do a couple at a time. And as long as you do them wet enough, you'll have plenty of time to go back in and add your little bit of orange to that. Looks like I left a little piece of sky open, so I'll have to go back in later and get that little triangle of sky painted in blue. Now again, the nice thing about these videos is you can take a break, you can quit watching, quit painting, take a break and come back and then start it and start right where you left off. So the videos are very beneficial in that way also.
Okay, I've got one more petal right here to do, and then I can uh, do my greenery. These are actually green, so um, I'm pretty much finished now with my, my petals. I am going to make my petals with a two layer wash. My first layer wash is going to be a very pale green because that very pale green, then I will leave as my stems and my veins and paint around them. So my first wash, it can either be yellow mixed with some sap green, or you can use yellow mixed with some turquoise. That makes a nice uh, light yellow also. You're going to put your second wash over your first wash. So your first wash is going to go down first and then you will totally dry it. And then the second wash will go on top. So my first wash, I mixed my turquoise and my yellow. I'm going to paint my leaf with that. And you see that nice, beautiful light green, yellow green color. That is just going to be my base color. My other color going on on top of that will be darker, but this color will be left as the veins in my leaf. So my leaf will actually be two-toned. Okay, so I'm gonna do all of my leaves that way because they all have veins in them. They also have curls to them, meaning that some of the underside of the leaf has curled upwards. And I will show you how to separate that out also that can just be separated out with some shadowing. You will be so surprised to see how some of the shadowing just will make this flower come alive. Shadowing, even though a lot of people really hesitate to put the dark colors on their pictures, the shadowing is what really makes your pictures come alive. Your shadowing is so very important. It should never be left off, even though it's very difficult for you to come with to terms with putting all of those dark colors on something that you've just painted. But it makes the world of difference when you do that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and dry these real quick also so I can show you what I'm talking about with the veining and then we'll go ahead and paint the other leaves in and we will start to work on our shadows. You can see also now what my salting did to my center. You can see some of the fine um, texture markings in the center from the salting right in here. 
but it makes it look nice and um, rough, which is what you want. Okay, so now we have this pretty well, getting pretty well done here. What I'm going to do is I am going to lightly sketch in where my veins would be in my leaf so you can understand what I'm trying to do here. Okay, so again, if you look at your picture and I am following this nice sunflower picture, but if you look at your picture, you can see where there is some veins and very lightly, I am drawing them in. You probably can't even see this but I, I'm drawing them in nice and light. And then what I will do is I am going to mix a darker green. So I could use my sap green, even that I used for my tree, but lighten it up a little bit by just adding water, adding maybe a little bit of extra green to it instead of more black. And I'm going to paint around my pencil lines. So I'm still going to go ahead and paint in my leaf. But now I'm painting around my nice thin pencil lines. Now, is there an easier way to do this? Could be. You may choose to just misc it your vein lines and then paint them in later. You could do that. But since I already have a lot of misc it on my painting for my fence lines, I didn't want to put any more misc it on. Not that it really matters, but I didn't want to put any more misc it on 
to be masking out my veins also. So I don't mind doing it this way. But now you can see how evident your veins have become just by putting some darker color up against your light color. And you have those nice veins painted in. They become nice and um, obvious. And you're gonna do that with all of your leaves once you've painted them in. While I have my pink rye over here, I'm gonna paint in this last petal so I can get that done. And then I am going to start to shadow my petals for you just so we can get everything covered before time is up. We're gonna go back in and continue to work on everything, but this way your petals will be covered, your shadowing will be covered, your leaves will be covered, everything will be covered so that the only thing you have to do is just go back in and catch up on it, everything or re-watch your video again. But you will know everything that you basically have to do now. I, you know, there won't be anything that you haven't seen me do or that you aren't quite sure of. You can always reach out to me in an email if you would like. Um, if you're not sure of something, you can always reach me by email. And I will try to answer your question. Okay, so my flower petals are all painted. I'm going to paint in my green petals with that nice light green first. This is the greenery that is on the um, underside of your sunflowers, kind of holds the sunflower in place. So I'm doing them also in light green first. We also have a stem. That's gonna be a nice light green. So we can get that stem painted in. And I'll go ahead and get my nice big leaf down here painted in. Again, I'm using my light green first, and then I will get my veins painted on or drawn on, and I will paint around those. When you have nice big areas to paint, then use a bigger brush. Use your brushes according to what you are painting. If you are painting a little tiny area, then use a smaller brush so that you don't get paint where you don't want it to be. But if you are painting in a nice big area, then by all means, you wanna use a nice big brush. You don't want your paint to start to dry on you. Wherever you are painting, you don't want it to start to dry because then what happens 
is you get a hard edge and a hard edge just creates um, lines in your painting that you do not want. So you wanna make sure that you are working nice and wet. You don't wanna allow your lines to dry on you. So if you're working nice and wet, you shouldn't have to worry about that because your paint will be wet enough that it's not gonna dry out on you. But if you try to stretch your paint, or if you are working very slow, which is fine, as long as you are wet. If you are nice and wet, you can work as slow as you want to because you won't get a hard line then. But if you are working slow and you are not working wet, then you are going to get hard lines because the edge of where you painted is going to start to dry on you. And when it starts to dry on you, then that's when the hard lines appear. So if you can't work fast, which is fine, you shouldn't have to, but if you can't work fast, then you definitely have to work nice and wet. Make sure that your paint that you're putting on is nice and wet and stays nice and wet until you are done with the area that you wanna paint. That is very important, especially if you're painting something that you don't want to have a hard line. A leaf isn't you know, the end of the world if it gets a hard line, because you could always pretend that it's a, a vein in your leaf. But if you would be doing someone's face or if you would be doing something that you don't want a line down the center of your picture, then you wanna get used to painting quickly or painting nice and wet. It's better to be too wet than not wet enough. You can always, always get your paint dry, but if you are too dry, and you try to re-wet your paint, that is when you're gonna get into some major problems because by trying to re-wet your paint, you're going to create a wash back. You're going to create all kinds of problems that you do not want. Anytime that you change the ratio of your paint and your water. So you've mixed your paint and you've mixed it with water. It has a certain ratio, so much water to so much paint. Every time you dip into your water and back into that paint that you've mixed, you change that water paint ratio. And every time it changes, there is the possibility that you could create a wash back. And that just means that now there is more water to it than paint. So the paint gets kind of washed back with all the water and it creates like a bloom in the middle of your picture, which definitely you do not want. So you always want to either mix enough paint so that you keep that same water paint ratio or that you're working nice and wet so that if that paint happens to need to um, re-wet itself or rewash itself, it'll dissipate itself slowly in that new ratio of water. So you just wanna be careful I always mix a lot of paint on my palette if I am doing a bigger area of something. It's better to have too much paint on your palette because you can always use it for something than to not have enough. And then you have to go ahead and try to remix 
and you have to redo that ratio exactly how it was before. And that is not easy to do. Unless you're a really experienced painter and you know exactly how much you've been using, you do not want to have to remix paint in the middle of painting something. If you've already put your first wash on and then you have to mix some, that's a different story. But if you are painting something and you have to remix that paint right in the middle of it, you could be creating a disaster for yourself. Okay, so I still have a couple leaves to paint, which is fine, but now I'm going to show you um, the reflections in our, uh, um, the shot, I'm sorry, the shadows in our um, picture here. So I'm going to start by shadowing the center here. The center of my flower has a shadow of the petals that are hanging over it. And I'm just going to follow my picture. So I'm talking about this shadow right here. I'm going to duplicate that shadow and then I will show you how to do some of these shadows to make your picture look more dimensional, okay? I'm working with um, a number six brush and I'm going to be using my watered down black. Sometimes you can use indigo to help with your shadowing. I wouldn't suggest indigo on this specific picture because indigo is a blue. And if you put that over your yellow, you're going to have shadows that tend to look green. You don't want that. So I'm just going to use my watered down black. I'm going to start along the edge here. And I know shadows are hard for you, but you need to get used to shadows because those shadows are what helps to make your picture look more realistic. I'm just following my picture. My picture is showing me what I need to shadow. I'm also going to be shadowing my petals. My petals will be shadowed where my center is, but I don't wanna do it all together. And the reason I don't want to do it all together is I don't want to try to catch everything all at the same time. So I'm going to do it a little bit at a time. And I'm also going to shadow, <coughs> excuse me, petal by petal, because I don't want to try to do too many at a time. I will also be creating a hard edge with my petal shadows. So I'm going to take one of my first petals that has a shadow. And these shadows are created by other petals overhanging these. So this shadow may be because of this petal up here, or it might be from another petal over here, but I'm following my picture, so I don't have to figure that out.
Now I'm going to move down and I'm going to move away from those wet shadows so I can work on the dry area. And this shadow is being caused by this petal overhanging this one. This is a softer shadow, so I am going to just rinse my brush and take that and soften that shadow. nice and dark in here because this is kind of curled up. This petal is kind of curled up around. So I'm going to soften this one because it's not shadowed all the way to the end. So I'll just soften this one with some water. This shadow is from the one above it. This shadow is from the one beside it. This one has some distinctive color that is left. And you can only tell that when you look at the picture. So I am going to leave those shapes just like in the picture. And I'm going to soften this edge. Some of your um, petals do not really have shadows, but they are textured. So I will dry brush down them. And I'll just take my brush, lay it on its side with a little bit of watered down black and drag it down the petal. I'm getting just a little bit of texturing, but it's just enough to show some texture on the leaves or on the petals, I'm sorry.
this one actually has a shadow from the overhang of the other petal. And you can start to see now how your um, flower is almost becoming dimensional because now it's getting all of those great shadows that it wouldn't normally have gotten if it wasn't number one, a sunny day, and number two, didn't have all those petals that are hanging over it, over one another. Again, you wanna do those wet against dry, not wet against wet. I know how you don't like to do this, but it's so important that you put in these shadows. A couple more minutes and we'll finish up. But I want you to be able to have at least done a little bit of everything. We're gonna do one more thing before we finish. And that will be um, some shadowing in the dirt. this nice shadow here of the overhang of this little twist in the petal. And we're gonna do a little bit of dry brushing on this one, a little bit of dry brushing on this one. We're doing a Zoom class. Oh, you're on Uh-huh, we're Zooming. <laughs> That's okay. And now we're going to do our shadows in the dirt because there are shadows caused by the leaves and the stalks and the flower petals. So if you follow your picture, I'm just going to put in some of those to show you. This would be from some additional flower stalks that are growing that are not necessarily in the picture. It could be part of the fencing. 
It could be a shadow of a leaf. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And just make a nice big leaf shadow there. And the very last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take off a little bit of my miskit to show you how I would paint in my fence and what that miskit has done, how it's kept everything nice and clean. But now you can see some of my shadows in the dirt, some shadow on my stem to make my stem nice and interesting some shadow from this leaf on the stem. I'm gonna dry it really quick and I'm gonna show you part of the fence and then this will be finished up for you and um, you'll get the finished result at the end of your um, recorded session. Okay, nice and quick. We're just gonna go over everything really quick before I do this. Your petals, you wanna paint those first, add in your orange. Shadowing comes at the very end. Your shadowing would be from your overhang or any parts of the petal that are curled over. And you wanna do petal by petal. Your leaves have two washes. Your first wash is this nice light wash. And then you're going to pencil in your veins and repaint, leaving those pencil lines nice and light. Your dirt was umber and black and salted, and you'll paint your shadows in your dirt also. So when I take off my miskit, miskit just rubs off. It's almost like a rubber cement. I'm gonna rub that off first. I'm going to paint it first with some pale burnt umber, which is brown. And then I'm going to drop in some burnt sienna, which is a light warm brown to make it look like my fence is rusted. Okay, so I'll show you that real quick before we end our session. My burnt umber first. And you can see how nice my miskit kept my fence nice and light, nice and white, so I didn't have to paint around it. Now I can paint it any color that I want. I'm painting it this nice burnt umber watered down. And while it's wet, you have to do it while it's wet to put in that burnt sienna to get that rusted look. And I'm going to go ahead and paint this first with my umber. And then I will get some sienna, nice and wet. And I'll drop that in to my umber to make it look rusted here and there. And then when that's dry, I'll put a shadow on the underside of my fence and I'll do it on an unpainted part now just to show you, but you are going to want to paint the underside of your fence with a little shadow. Okay, I'm not gonna do it here obviously because it's still wet, but you wanna do that with your fence and then you are completely finished. If you want, if there's anything that you missed, you can add it 
but you don't want to add it until your paint is dry. Because if you try to go in and add things when it's wet, you'll just cause yourself a big mess. So wait for it to dry before you go ahead and add things in. This painting will be completely finished. It will be sent to the um, Monroeville Library site. So it will be part of the um, Zoom video completely finished. So you'll be able to see how we did it and then what it looks like completely finished. I hope you enjoyed this session. Again, you can contact me. Uh, my email is listed in the, um, on the Monroeville site. You can contact me if you have any questions or comments or if you have any concerns. And hopefully in the spring, we're gonna be picking these series back up again. They are free. You can watch them. You can watch them anytime. There are multiple past classes to please go back and, and if you wanna watch those. And also just an FYI, my name again is Marcy Mason. I have a gallery showing here in gallery space at the Monroeville Library until the end of November. If you'd like to come up and see some of my paintings, some of my personal paintings, and also some of the paintings are here that we did in these painting sessions. So please come up, enjoy, and I'm glad you, I'm glad you came to class. Thank you.